I wonder if they've made any progress yet. Shall we go check on them? Let's. What's under here first? Okay. Always happy to take somebody's gold. Well, any results? Yes, well, thanks to the boy here. As it turns out, he has quite the knack for languages. <laughs> Only because I've got the best teacher. <laughs> Careful, honey tongue. You'll give this old girl ideas. Huh? Now, child, <laughs> I'm sure they're curious about the song we unearthed. Why don't you read it aloud? Yes, teacher. Song? Eight-headed is the lord of the land, with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Through pulses of earth doth base nature's flow, as he awaits the time of awakening. Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. The Nameless Empyrean hath one heart. The Nameless Empyrean hath one body. Therians? Essentially, this ancient text you found is an annotated volume of drawings and songs pertaining to Enominot. Annotated? Then hurry up and just tell us what it means. I'm sorry. So far, we've only figured out how to read the song lyrics. All right. I take it we're still in for a good long wait before it's thoroughly decrypted. Likely so. But if we want to find out what the Abbey is up to, we need to know what's in this book, no matter how long it takes. Hmm. What the Abbey's up to, is it? I think we can learn much, even from the lyrics alone. The drawings depict him with eight heads. One of them belongs to his main body, but the other seven are his mouths. Those mouths consume malevolence, sending it along earth pulses back to that main body so he can awaken. The seven monsters fitting that description are called... Therians. Right. Now as for this malevolence, I have no idea what that means. Hmm... What about the second part? I haven't studied much ancient history, but it said this world was created by four Empyreans. Earth, water, wind, and fire. But they also call Enominot an Empyrean. Perhaps a war broke out between Enominot and the other Empyreans that resulted in him being sealed away. But if there is someone to connect with this divine power, the Therians will keep spawning. And just like that, Enominat will be revived. If we assume that Shepard Artorius fits that bill, and that he's trying to reawaken Enominat, everything lines up. Which means our job is to find these Therians and cut off Enominat's heads, so to speak. But where do we even start looking for them? Remember. The song states that the Therians and Enominat's body are connected through Earth pulses. If their job is to feed Enominat, the most effective place to position them would be at the Earth pulse points. Points? The place is where the power of Earth pulses is concentrated. I'm guessing the temple that we're right next places to. Places with that sigil. Hey! Remember the barrier that was keeping this bug in the forest? Wait, are you trying to say that thing's Aetherian? And yet, it would explain why the Abbey was keeping it locked up. And there was that same barrier at the villa, too. Yep. That's right. 
Do you suppose that was also a Therian? Does that mean the Therians all come in different forms? Should we go to Logris and check? It's a long trip. We've just started deciphering the book. I'd hate to lose time on some fool's errand. I'd rather know at least a little more about what's in it before we make a move. Lobby said you just keeping the bug in your pocket. Something bothering you, Grim? This line. The one about Therians being forever reborn. Uh, I just felt the same thing as I did in Warg Forest. The needle's pointing in the direction of Amenoch's temple, Palamedes. Do I recall hearing that the Abbey took that over? Temples and ritual sites are often built on places yep. thought to be rich in spiritual energy. Could the temple possibly be an Earth Pulse point? There's lots of Earth Pulse points scattered all over the world. If there's only seven Therians, most of them will be empty. It's not like we have any better leads. If there's even a chance, shouldn't we go check it out? Better than sitting around waiting on the book. If nothing else, we'll find out what Laffy said is sensing. Hmm, just a theory, but if you were to kill a Therian... What? Hmm, I guess there's only one way to find out. Never mind, good luck out there. Well, that was interesting. We have to see what's over here now. Is that the priestess? The priestess's daughter. Who are you? The innkeeper's daughter. I just... I happened to overhear you all talking about going to Palamedes and... Did you report us to the Abbey? Report? But you already have an exorcist with you. If you have any business, talk with her then. I... I'm Eleanor Hume, an exorcist with the Abbey. How might I be of service? I want you to look for someone. A mother and her child went to visit the Abbey grounds, but they haven't returned. They've both gone missing? Yes. The look mother's name is Mahina. A She's a priestess of Amenoch, and her little daughter's name is Kamoana. Just dancing back and forth. Hold on. If she's a priestess of Amenoch... Right. Ever since the Abbey booted her out from the temple, she's been regularly going back to make her objections heard. But one day, she never returned home. And now her daughter has disappeared too. I can only assume that she went to go look for her mother. And you believe they're being held at the temple? Oh no, ma'am. I just... I just can't imagine Mahina would abandon her daughter like that. Kamoana is next in line to succeed her, so she's had a strict upbringing, but her mother truly loves her. Please forgive Mahina for her protests. I was just hoping you could use the Abbey's resources to track them down. I will do everything in my power to find them. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Like Kamoana, I grew up with only my mother as family. I can't help but worry for them. Of course. Let's be off, Miss Exorcist.
I guess we'll go ahead and save it here. Oh wow, it's pretty out here. Do I still have my, uh... I'm gonna check my difficult. I don't remember if I left it on the tents or not. What's your game here? The mother and daughter, you mean? That's on me. I'll search for them myself. I don't care about that. Well, what then? Why are you actively helping us decipher the book when we're using it to thwart the Abbey's plans? You think I might be deliberately misleading you? Laying a trap of some sort for you all? Are you? I think you're a lot of things, Demon. But foolish is not one of them. <sighs> I want to know the truth. I want to know what Lord Artorius is trying to accomplish. And there's something happening in the world right now. Trying to bring I back want to know what it maybe. is. Unfortunately, little old Eleanor has never been deemed trustworthy enough to be given such information. So, my only option is to find out for myself. You've got the soul searching down at least. The Abbey and your band of rogues follow two different paths. But something tells me either will lead me to the same destination. And so you don't see any need to lie to us? Exactly. And what'll you do if those truths don't line up cleanly with what you believe? I'm... not sure yet. As honest an answer as any. Either way, it looks like you'll be working with us for the near future. Yes, for now. <laughs> hey, could I ask you something? What is it? About the Therians. I've heard you call yourself a Therian before. Is there any particular insight you have about them? No, none. Artorius said I was one, that's all. And that doesn't bother you? Does it bother you? Nope, not at all. If you're not worried, then neither am I. I'm surrounded by freaks. Amen. But, was that truly the reason Ceres chose me? Velvet keeps picking on Madame Eleanor! They're total opposites, so I know they're just gonna clash sometimes, but Velvet takes it too far! You really think they're totally opposite? If Madame Eleanor is a white lily, then Velvet is a black rose. If Madame Eleanor is a soaring pegasus, then Velvet is a wolf in the shadows. If Madame Eleanor is a plate of spaghetti carbonara, Velvet is squid ink noodles with seaweed. I don't follow you completely, but I think I get the point. <laughs> I'm sure you understand. The two have nothing at all in common. And since they don't share anything in common, some fighting now and then just can't be helped. Well, oh, bien, they both have beautiful hair. Okay, <laughs> but we're talking a noble exorcist and an aloof demon. Eleanor sometimes treats you coldly. And Velvet has helped me more times than I can count. Madame Eleanor gives herself fully to the salvation of others, but Velvet is bent solely on revenge. That means they're both motivated by thoughts of others. How is the cheerful and talkative Madame Eleanor at all the same as the brooding, taciturn Velvet? Both of them talk to me when it's just the two of us together. You're just trying to be contrary. I'm only telling you what I've experienced. <laughs> Actually, I feel that Madame Eleanor isn't really reaching out to me. It's all right or if Bien Eleanor Fu. doesn't want to talk to you. I'm here for you, Bienfu. You aren't alone. That just makes me feel lonelier. <laughs> Bien. You two you are opposites Mogulu. yourselves. Huh? <laughs> It is quite pretty over here. Should we get into a battle? Guess it's time to fight!
one. It's hungry? Bingo! Very nice! And this? It's disturbingly happy? Pardon, Lou. You're making it kind of obvious. 